raw nature. Okay, welcome back to uh, Let's Draw. This is a really special episode because um, this is something that I love to do more than anything, and that is to drift the uh, Bow River. I love to come to the Bow River with my uh, with my friend uh, Greg Sternberg. He's a fellow teacher, and uh, he taught my son uh, he taught my son Seth uh, when Seth was in uh, grade six. And uh, Seth is out here today uh, with us fishing the river for the first time, and. Um, <clears throat> Also, he really badly wants to catch a fish. He hasn't uh, caught one yet. And uh, so uh, this is going to be a really, really good day. Um, today, let's draw a brown trout. Okay, welcome back to Let's Draw Nature. Today, all you'll be needing is a pencil, HP pencil. If you've got a sharpener uh, to keep your pencils sharp, that's very important uh, as well. Um, if you've got a piece of uh, tissue paper, like so. And if you've uh, been able to purchase a kneaded eraser that you can make little shapes up like this, that would be awesome. So we're going to start with uh, landscape style uh, with your paper. So on its side, um, or as my grade two students say, hot dog style today, as opposed to hamburger, which would be the other way. Okay, so let's get started on this uh, brown trout. Um, I think the best way to start is with uh, the big shape of uh, the brown trout and uh, it's on its side here. We're going to draw a uh, almost like a, um, a big oval kind of a torpedo shape coming in from uh, from the right side of your paper and then we've also got a big uh, we've got a big fin here that is like uh, kind of like a triangle actually for those of you that play guitar it's kind of like a guitar pick right here these are the two big shapes in in uh, this composition for the brown trout and uh, so let's uh, kind of draw this in this shape and I can see his mouth you can uh, or their mouth I don't know if this is a male or female I forget which one has the uh, the big hooked jaw if it's the male or the female and uh, I'm gonna ask uh, maybe later in the show, if I get a hold of him, my friend uh, Carl Geist, he's a he's probably the best uh, best painter of fish that I know of. He's done all the regulations you see in Alberta, all the fish on the regulations. He's painted them, and uh, his specialty is really the brown trout. I first met Carl uh, down at the Bow River when I was about 16 in the middle of winter. I just got a fly rod for my birthday. He was down there, he was he was going after brown trout with these big long flies that looked like uh, Christmas decorations, I thought. That would have been uh, 1980, so that gives you an idea of how old I might be. And uh, anyway, Carl uh, was the one that got me into fly fishing, and uh, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but uh, but we skip we skipped quite a bit of uh, grade ten, and we'd see each other down at the the Bow River on a nice day. We should have been in school. Oh, I can't believe I'm telling you this, but well, it's true. I don't think it hurt us really. Being outside is uh, the best way to learn in a lot of ways. Anyway, so we've got these kind of uh, um, where this fin meets the gill here. We've got kind of a shape that uh, goes like this. I'm just trying to break down the shapes right now. 
the big shapes. Because remember what I tell you, it's like the foundation of a house that you're building. You got to have a solid foundation or the rest of your drawing or painting is not going to turn out uh, as well as you want. So uh, here we go here. It's kind of fun to put his, uh, there, there I go again saying his, I don't know if it's a his, but uh, Carl's going to tell us. Those big magnificent brown trout that uh, have the big hook jaw. I have never caught a huge one yet, but uh, a lot of my friends have, and I guess that day is, maybe it's coming. We'll see. Okay, so the eye in there. And of course, I'm out in my garage again today. I have to time this well so that uh, uh, the heater's off, I'm not making a big racket while I'm uh, while I'm drawing. So it's uh, November. No, it's going to be November. I think it's November 28th, I'll have to double check, but, um, so it's cold now. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, I've got his mouth kind of around like this, his lip. Remember to look for the negative shapes, like I told you. So that these shapes in here, um, look at the shape around the trout. Very important. It's as important as the trout itself, because that's going to give you the the reference points for everything, where everything should go. do something a little bit differently today and that is uh, we're gonna we're gonna um, shade around this shape totally right now we're gonna do something different today because uh, I see what's called a lot of reflected uh, light on uh, around this fish uh, what's just gonna look it's just gonna look uh, awesome when we uh, when we start shading the the trout itself. So uh, I've got a few pencils sharp, sharpened here um, ready, but that's just because I don't want to interrupt the uh, the flow of this drawing for you. So. Now, if you go to the dollar store, you can get a package of 10 pencils for $1.50. That'll last you a whole season of Let's Draw. And then uh, if you get yourself a pad of paper or a sketchbook, it might run you back 10 bucks. But all of that should be enough to for you to do all the drawings for one season. So this is the 10th episode this year. And, oh, I just lost the lead there, so go 
with another one. Also going to shade, uh, do some shading in the fish here, and then afterward, I will do some what my students and I call backward shading. So we'll go in with an eraser, and we will shade the other parts. Now my son and my friend Greg and I, we had a lot of fun uh, fishing the river. My son Seth learned how to row, which is very difficult in the river because everything seems backwards when you get in that boat and in the current. It's kind of, uh, kind of intense actually because you're, if you're like me uh, and you start rowing, my tendency for the first little while when I'm rowing is that uh, I will row around in circles for a couple times until until I've uh, figured it out. But uh, usually it works out fine. Anyway, Seth, uh, my son, he did really well rowing. And uh, because Mr. Sternberg, or Greg, was his teacher, uh, he also showed him, gave him some tips on reeling in a fish or landing a fish and things like that. So I think when you're a teacher, you uh, you always love teaching. You never stop, really. And I don't think that uh, two things. I, I love art and I love teaching and I love uh, drawing and fishing and whatnot. I'm able to combine all the things that that I love to do and uh, that's my hope for you too that you find uh, things that you love to do and are able to uh, continue to do them through your life. If you're lucky it might be uh, you might create for yourself or have a dream job where where uh, you're doing all those things that you really love to do. So now I'm going to go in with, uh, get rid of that lead there, I'm going to go in with this and we're going to shade this in just like magic. Huh. People have said, uh, they've asked me, do you like Bob Ross? And yeah, I love Bob Ross. I think he's uh, he was fantastic, and uh, something about Bob Ross that maybe you didn't know is that uh, he was actually in the army. He was a drill sergeant for for a long time, and uh, he said that he got tired of yelling at people, and uh, so that's why you know when you hear him in his calm voice and whatnot, it's because he really didn't like yelling at people and he had enough of that in the army so so uh, anyway I really uh, I love his videos they're quite relaxing and um, I can't paint as fast or as quickly as he can he's got a, a way of painting that is called Alla Prima so Alla Prima is that uh, your paint's wet and you're working on it with wet and uh, excuse me um, for me, uh, that's, that's very difficult to do. Um, I take a long time on my paintings and, uh, they have to dry overnight and then I work on them again and again. And I think he used oils too, same as me. But, uh, yes, I... I do enjoy Bob Ross, and he loved nature too, just like me, just like you, so that's pretty cool. But back to the, the brown trout and the Bow River, uh, beautiful river. Um, I've grown up by it virtually my entire life, and uh, 
fished it a lot and uh, when uh, I got the opportunity to be able to go in a drift boat to stand at the front and to cast and whatnot, it was, it's probably one of the most fun, greatest experiences uh, that I've had because um, you're fishing, you're at the front of the boat, it's a nice day and uh, you know to watch all the landscape around you go past and to see all the birds and uh, wildlife uh, you know you'll see eagles, herons, um, mink, uh, you know you might see a moose once in a while, um, a lot of pelicans on the Bow River it's just so much fun. It's, a, it's the best way I can think of uh, spending a day. So if you get an opportunity to, to float on the Bow River or uh, fish on the Bow River, take it. I've been fortunate to be able to, uh, to, be, um, to go out with some pretty great uh, guides uh, that have guided the uh, Bow River for years. So I'm thinking of people like uh, my friend Alice Hoffman. He uh, he's guided the uh, the bow for years, and uh, he's uh, very knowledgeable about the river and how to catch the fish. And um, his friend uh, Russ Webb is also an incredible uh, guide, fisherman, and then also. Uh, there's another art in fly fishing which is called fly time and uh, Russ's flies are unbelievable. They are absolute works of art and Russ um, has provided me a picture of, I asked him what was working for uh, the brown trout uh, this summer and so he sent a picture of a, a fly he tied and uh, this is a foam grasshopper that he's tied so that's Looks, as you can see, it looks like a grasshopper. This is one of the brown trout's favorite uh, food as the, they uh, fall off the banks into the water. Um, they just slurp them up and that's what you try and imitate when you uh, are fishing. Anyway, um, Russ gives uh, fly tying uh, classes if you're interested. And uh, I think, I believe you can find him on Instagram into the blue fishing and uh, on Facebook just Russ Webb and uh, if you want to take a fly tying uh, course he's he's a great uh, person to do that with and uh, maybe he and I are gonna get out in the spring and finally I will catch a, a monster brown trout like he has so many times and uh, Oh, by the way, this photo that you are working from um, of the uh, brown trout that we're working from right now, it was taken by uh, Russ Webb. I haven't caught any brown trouts of uh, or brown trout of this size. This is uh, quite a big brown trout that uh, Russ has caught here. And... Uh, both Russ and Dallas, uh, they were such great guides that they were asked by uh, movie actors uh, like Sam Elliott and Tom Selleck, Wilford Brimley, to take them out. Even presidents of the United States, former presidents, um, they took them out on the river. And uh, how many fish they caught, I don't know. Oh, I'm really... Uh, Really pleased to see there's so many uh, uh, women have decided to get into fly fishing and and uh, this is this is a great thing and um, when uh, my son and I and Greg were fishing um, we saw a, a, a guide female guide she came down and uh, they were they were uh, out fishing us big time they were hauling in some big fish we didn't get too many that day. And uh, you're probably wondering what, whether uh, Seth caught a fish. He did, but he wasn't prepared for it. And uh, it was a huge, huge rainbow. 
it uh, came off his line, so through the hook. Um, yes, getting back to that, if you're a if you're a girl and uh, you love fly fishing, you 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 should do it. It's awesome. It's for everybody. Fly fishing's for everybody. The river's for everybody, I think. And uh, Greg and I, uh, we took uh, singer-songwriter uh, Ian Tyson out. He got, he caught a brown trout. I think it was his first one. I'm not sure. But um, he had a lot of fun. I think it was on, uh, in October, some years back. And I asked him, I said, you know what, you need to, well, I guess I told him, you need to write a song about fly fishing. It's the best. Maybe he will. And he's written songs about just about every other, uh, all of nature around here, magpies, crows, or sorry, uh, magpies, um, hawks, uh, eagles, all kinds of things. So now this is kind of uh, the fun part. You can put the, look at where all the dots are. Or all the spots, I mean, sorry, on the brown trout. The pattern doesn't have to be exact, but you can start putting these dots on uh, his head here. Just take a look at where you think they are. The constellations here, all over the, the trout. Kind of guess where they are. You can see that there, there is a little bit of a pattern to them, but they're mostly, uh, they're fairly random. I guess they're kind of like freckles. Some of you might have a lot of freckles. They're kind of like that. Now I can see that um, we need to put a bit more shading in here all along the brown trout's back because it actually, their backs go to a greenish black like at the very top, they're darker. And this is going to give your fish a little bit more um, what we call volume. which means it's going to look more, I guess the word would be 3D or three-dimensional. Now it's very exciting to catch a brown trout because when they take the, uh, when they take the fly and they go on a run, it's like a freight train, especially in the current. And uh, you better be ready because uh, they're going to break themselves off to your line if you're not paying attention. And uh, I happen to love the sound of uh, of the uh, the fishing reel. 
um, the fishing rails really screams when uh, when you've got a brown trout on. Because the line goes out so fast. Like the movie Jaws. I don't know if you've seen that one, but kind of like that. It's exciting. Hi, Carl. Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you very much. Okay, listen, I've got two questions about uh, the brown trout, but I, you know, with my students, I say you can never ask two questions. Just ask your first question first. So my first question, uh, uh, Carl, is uh, does the male or the female uh, brown trout have a hooked jaw? Okay. Second question is, um, where did the brown trout in the Bow River come from, to your knowledge? To my knowledge, and I'm not sure if this is correct or not, was that it came about by an accident. And my recollection of the story was that there was some movement of juvenile fish that was Going, they were basically transporting them into Banff Park, and I'm not sure where they were going to be eventually released and whatnot, but as the story goes, is that the cart that they were dragging along behind, I think at that time a horse, team of horse, the axle broke, and so they were stuck there with this, this tank full of fish, and they had nowhere to put them, and so there was the river. And so they de deposited the brown trout into the river. Now, the brown trout themselves are not an endemic species. They're not native to North America. They come from the old world. They come from Europe, Eurasia, and whatnot. And my understanding is that basically there's two brood stocks which have informed um, releases into North America, and that is the Loch Leven strain from Scotland and the German brown trout. Now, in terms of distinguishing features, it is my understanding that the Loch Leven strain um, is the one that tends to carry the bright the pinky red or orange spots along the flank. And the distinction between the German brown is that it tends to be have bigger, heavier spots on it. And I think in some ways there have been both of those introductions into the Bow River. Uh, because you'll oftentimes catch fish with those distinguishing diagnostics where you have the red, the red orange spots along the flank with kind of a halo around it, and then others you'll find fewer red spots along the flank but more heavily spotted fish. So uh, the thing about the uh, brown trout is that they, since they come from Europe, are less susceptible to a disease that has just been found in the Bow River, and that's the whirling disease, which tends to affect the a um, North American species because they have not been exposed to the disease um, in their in their past like the brown trout have. So those fish like the brown, uh, the rainbow trout, the cutthroat trout are very susceptible to whirling disease. Okay, um, Carl, sorry to interrupt. I'm just going to run out of battery here really quick. So um, that's great. Uh, Carl, um, 
Uh, I'm drawing a brown trout right now. You are the master. There is no one that can paint fish like you in the world. And I'm so happy that you uh, you, you are uh, talking to us right now. So, uh, so I want you to have a great day. And uh, thank you for introducing me to fly fishing. Uh, it would be would have been almost 40 years ago. So, so thank you for that. You're welcome, Paul. And I'm, you know, I've enjoyed the the years that we have had fishing together and uh, experiencing things from novice to intermediate to more advanced. So thank you for also producing these wonderful videos uh, that engage people in drawing and observation and create another generation of creative individuals. Thanks, Carl. Now these uh, spots look a little bit too contrived. So try and put some in between these spots. Try and put some kind of random, more random ones. Like yes, they are kind of they are kind of in a line when they when they uh, come around uh, the brown trout's back, but they're not exactly in a line. They're kind of a little bit a little bit random and uh, some of those shapes of the uh, spots are irregular mean, meaning uh, they're not perfectly round or So I took some time uh, to do all these spots because it would have taken a long time otherwise. And uh, I was going to say, if you're a student and you're doing this today, uh, maybe ask your teacher if you can have another class to outline all these nice little halos around the brown trout's spots. And, and it makes it look a lot better. And we shall see you next week on... Let's draw nature.